Many people have called my story epic. Epic being a word used um, to tell a story on a grand scale. Now really, it's not me that is grand. It is the epic story of my God. Let me begin way back when I was a little girl of about six, where my very best friend happened to be a little Jewish girl. And because my parents traveled a lot, I used to go and stay with her at, uh, for weeks at a time. And it was during these stays that I discovered a people that were so different from me as a nominal little Anglican girl. Who were these people that I read about in the Bible stories, the Hebrews, the Israelites? And yet I loved them so much. She was just, she and her family embraced me like never before. What was Shabbat and all these festivals, Passover? I was fascinated. Then when I turned 14, I had an encounter with the God of Israel, an encounter that changed my life and my view on everything forever. Putting a love in my heart for the Word of God, as I have mentioned before, and God gave me a heart for the things that He loved, and that was the Jewish people. And this is where my journey began. When I turned 19, my parents stood me to a trip to Israel my sister was living there in Tel Aviv, working for the South African Embassy. Little did I know what I was in for. The minute I landed in Israel, it felt like I was coming home. It was the weirdest feeling. Everything felt mine. The people, the, the streets, the language. I couldn't wait to start learning Hebrew. And I was quite confused because I thought God had made a mistake. Why wasn't I born Jewish and living here in Jerusalem? Well, being young and still having to study, I had to go back home. And I chose to do a graphic arts diploma course. And of course, I chose Jerusalem to be my theme. Well, little did I know that there was an encounter in store for me that I wasn't bargaining for. One of my lecturers was one of the most anti-Semitic human beings I'd ever come across. And one day, only him and I in a studio, I'd left the cap off a thinner's bottle in the studio and quite by mistake, forgetting to put it back on until I received a blow in my back where I was hit to the floor in rage where he said, what is it with you with these people? Why is it that you love these and I won't go on with the swearing. I went home and I sobbed on my bed. I thought, my God, what is this monster that is still alive in human beings that you would never ever understand would be like that? He looked like a normal human being, but he became an animal with such rage. And you know, in hindsight, I realized God, that God had allowed that incident to show me what was still alive and well on planet Earth aimed at his people to liquidate the state of Israel. And he asked me something deep within my heart. It wasn't verbal, but I just knew. He said, Elizabeth, are you willing to stand for my people, to stand up for them when times get tough? Well, it seems like anybody who stands up for Israel in these days, there's a price to pay. And I had to make a choice that day. And I chose in my ignorance, I said, whatever, Lord, who you love, I'll love. And this is where my story really started. Well, of course, after art school, I hot-footed it back to Israel, um, doing the kibbutz thing, picking fruit until if, if by four o'clock in the morning, discoing the night away in the evenings, having a ball as a young girl, until a phone call came for me to be employed as a volunteer at the International Christian Embassy. I'd never heard of these people before, but what an organization that was feeding the Christian world proper information about Israel and encouraging Christians to travel to Israel to help the economy after so many centuries of incredible bad stories of how Christians have persecuted the Jews. It was an organization stretching out their hands saying, Israel, we are desperately sorry for what has been done in the name of Christianity. 
Well, I bought into their ideology immediately and I became their resident artist. And the one day, a young Jewish man came walking in, wanting to know what we were doing in his country and enough damage had been done in our God's name and that we should leave. His anger I could understand because I'd learnt that there is this perception amongst the Jews and I don't blame them, that we are there just to drive them out of the country, convert them, do whatever, but not just let them be who God has called them to be. So this is where the next part of my story began.